Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to begin the creation of a multiplayer game. But before we get started, I want to take some time and talk about different APIs that you can use to make it easier in creating a multiplayer game. Now, there are two main APIs that I would like to talk about, but there are other options out there. The first API is the built-in Unity networking service, and the second is the Photon plugin. Now the nice thing about the Unity networking service is that it's all built into Unity to begin with. And so Unity provides us with classes and different components, which makes it easier for developers like us to create multiplayer games. Unity also provides on their website a lot of documentation on how to create multiplayer games using their service. However, the number one problem that I have found while using the Unity networking service is that it can really only take you so far in creating a well flushed out multiplayer game. The networking service does a really great job at providing basic multiplayer functionality, but once you get further along and into more advanced topics, I feel like the Unity networking service is a little bit lacking. Now when I was creating the multiplayer functionality for my Snake Cube game, I started with using the networking service that Unity provides, and I got pretty much my whole game built out with multiplayer. And then I got into the need of having host migration, which is where when the host of the game drops his connection, you pick one of the other players to become the host. And I found out that Unity at this point in time really just does not support that service. And to me that seemed pretty silly because in almost every single multiplayer game that is more than just two players, Host migration is necessary. You need host migration because if the host drops his connection, then the whole game is ruined for all the other players. If it's just one on one and the host drops his connection, then you can say that the second player is the winner. But if there's more than two players, who's the winner? You know. Now this might be something that Unity is still working on and could update in the future. And who knows if they do, maybe I'll switch back and start using the networking service. Now because the Unity networking service does not support necessary multiplayer features such as host migration, that required me to switch over to the Photon plugin, which essentially means that I had to reprogram all my multiplayer scripts so that it worked with the Photon API. But once I did, I gained an appreciation for the Photon plugin. It has excellent documentation, it's an easy to use API, and it supports all the multiplayer functionality that you're going to need in your game, including host migration. So to save you lots of time and trouble, I would highly recommend that you begin creating your multiplayer game using the Photon plugin, and we're going to show you how to use it. So let's get started. So here we have a brand new Unity project open, and the first thing that we're going to do is enable the collaboration service, and that way I can pass this project back and forth between me and my brother. So to do this, we're first going to go over to the Services tab, and as you can see here, we've already connected this project to a Unity account. But if you haven't done so, then you're going to need to select your Unity account from the drop-down menu, and then hit the Create button, which will create a project ID and associate this project with your Unity account. But once you've done that, you'll have this screen where you have all your different Unity services. And as you can see, there's things like ads and multiplayer, but the thing that we're going to do is enable collaborate. So I'm going to click on that and then we're going to toggle on the collaborate service by clicking this switch here. Once the collaboration service is enabled, we can then click on this drop down menu with the blue arrow pointing up that says collab and then we can hit publish and this will publish our project to Unity's collaboration service. And so if you're working in a team, this is an excellent way to share your project back and forth. And it's also an excellent way to back up your project so that you can always revert back to a previous save just in case files get corrupted and stuff like that. Once it's finished publishing your project, you'll now see a green check mark next to Colab instead of a blue arrow. So now that we have our project set up, let's go and get the Photon plugin. And so we're going to go to the Asset Store window. Now in the search box, we're going to type Photon, Pun, and hit Enter. We can then select the Price drop-down menu and then drag the right-hand range all the way over to the left so that we're only searching for free plugins and hit Apply. Now here you can see that there are two blue-colored Photon plugins. The first one is Photon 2 Unity Networking 
and the second one is Photon Classic Unity Networking. Now we use the Photon Classic to create our Snake Cube game, but in this tutorial we want to be up to date, so we're going to use the Photon 2 plugin. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and then we'll go over and hit download. Once it's finished downloading, you'll now see that that same pink button now says import. So let's go ahead and click on that, which will start the import process, which should take a little bit of time. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to leave everything selected. But if you wanted to, you could probably deselect their demos folder, although it might not be a bad idea to look at some of their demos for ideas. So let's go ahead and hit import, and this process should take a few minutes. Once it's finished importing, you'll see this window here, which is the pun wizard, and it has a field for your app ID or email. Now we need to go and get the app ID. So in your browser, we're going to go to the Photon website. Now the link to this website is in the description below, and once you're here, you'll need to create a new free account if you haven't already. But once you're logged in, you should see this screen here, and there should be an option that says create new app. And so let's go ahead and click on that. On this page, you're going to need to select the photon type from the drop down menu. And so we're going to select photon PUN. We then need to go through and fill out all the necessary information about our application. Once you're finished filling out this form, we'll then click on create. This will then take us back to this page here. And you can see that we have our new application created. And right below the name of our application, we can see the app ID. And so we're going to click on that. And then we're going to copy this string and go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, we're going to paste that string into the app ID field of our PUN wizard, and then we'll hit Setup Project. It will then give you this message that says your app ID is now applied to this project. It also says, Done. All connection settings can be edited in the Photon Server settings now. Have a look. So once you get that message, let's go ahead and hit Close, which will close our PUN wizard. Now the next thing I'm going to do is push an update of our project to the cloud over the collaboration service. And so I'm going to select the Colab drop-down menu. I'll type a little note that says added photon plugin, and then I'll hit publish now. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this video on setting up the Photon plugin. It wasn't a whole lot of information and it was pretty easy, but give yourself a pat on the back because you're now on your way to creating your first multiplayer game. In our next multiplayer tutorial, we'll teach you how to create a room that other people can make connections to. So make sure that you tune in for that. Now thank you so much for watching this video on how to set up your Photon plugin. I hope it was informational. Make sure that you like this video and share it with your friends so that they too can learn how to make awesome video games. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.